Good day, good day. Hello. This is my first, uh, my first quote review. Uh, today we are going to be doing Van der Graaff Generator. This is the aerosol gray machine by the Van der Graaff Generator. It is their debut record. Um, although there's kind of interesting story behind all that. Um, I decided on doing Van der Graaff first. Uh, probably a strange band because they may not be the most well-known band in the world, but uh, they are a personal favorite of mine. And uh, I think they're really, really good. There's also a lot of excitement. Uh, their latest album, their 13th studio album, uh, Do Not Disturb, is due out within a week. Although being in Canada, it's probably going to be a few weeks for me. But uh, to kind of keep my anticipation in line, I figured I'd just talk about the albums. Anyway, Aerosol Grey Machine. First album. Uh, it's an interesting one because... Personally, I only consider it half a Van der Graaff Generator album. It's also, it's just, it's equally as much a Peter Hamill solo album as it is Van der Graaff Generator. So this is kind of the, uh, it's the debut for both Peter Hamill solo and Van der Graaff Generator. There is a difference between the two. A lot of people um, have difficulty differentiating the two, but uh, I think there is definitely a band thing going on with Van der Graaff. Um, and of course, it was Van der Graaff's early success that gave Hamill the opportunity to start his solo career, um, in which you know I think he had more creative control in that. But uh, as for as for the album itself, um, it's it's an interesting one, very interesting. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's got anything really classic on it, but um, it's it's a. Uh, it's a fascinating artifact. Very, very 1960s. It has that 60s vibe to it. Um, so it's kind of dated in that regard. But uh, it, it, does, it doesn't uh, hurt my enjoyment of it. Definitely, if you're, if you're looking into discovering Van der Graaff Generator or Peter Hamill, I don't think I'd recommend this as the start because it's not very representative of uh, what came later. Um, his voice, for one thing, on this album is... I mean, obviously, Peter Hamill's got a very good voice. If you know anything about Peter Hamill, uh, it is his voice, which is epic. Uh, we'll talk more about that in coming episodes, but it's not quite there yet. He's, I'm sure the live live stuff was a different story, but his voice is uh, a little bit, uh, a little young. He hasn't found it yet. Um, of course, it isn't the, uh, or it isn't the classic lineup yet. Uh, we've got. Peter Hamill on guitar and vocals. I'm not sure if he does any piano on here or not. No, don't think so. Just vocals and acoustic guitar. Uh, we've got Hugh Banton, uh, who's been there. He's well, still in the band. On uh, piano and organ. Um, great player. Uh, we've got Keith Ellis on bass. Uh, one of two Van der Graaff bass players. Uh, this is his only appearance on a Van der Graaff album. And uh, Guy Evans, of course, on the drums. Doing very good drumming. One of my favorite drummers. As a drummer, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Guy Evans, and I think he's possibly influenced my playing quite a bit. Um, take a look at some of the songs here. It opens with Afterwards, uh, which is the only... I think it's the, it's the oldest song that Peter Hamill still plays now. He plays them at his he plays it uh, at his solo concerts, but um, the band certainly haven't played afterwards. I'd be very surprised if uh, I went to a Van der Graaff show and they played afterwards. But it's good again, very 60s, um, very much a Hamill solo thing. I think it's more Hamill solo than Van der Graaff. Uh, then Orthendian Street Part One and Two. It's you know it's kind of nice. It's a nice little ditty. Um, Running Back is more of an extended song. It's kind of got a big intro, um, kind of build-up part into it. Into a Game is similar to that. Like I said, they're nice songs. There's nothing that really stands out here for me. But uh, actually, the flip the side, you get to the, the next side after Into a Game, you get Aerosol Grey Machine. That one does stand out to me just because it's a, a very silly, it's almost like a radio jingle from the 60s. And very unlike... Van der Graaff Generator after that. There was always a sense of humor in the band, a kind of dark, convoluted one, but never as blatantly as on the title track for this album. Uh, and Black Smoke Yen is kind of a little instrumental, kind of a chanty thing, atmospheric, it's nice. 
Aquarian is a very good song. Um, I really enjoy that. Possibly the closest thing to kind of pointing the direction that they were going to take later. Um, kind of, I, like, I love the big build-up at the end and the dramatic piano. Uh, then we get Necromancer. Probably the best vocal performance on the album, maybe. Um, there's a cuckoo clock going off. We can end up getting distracted. And we close with Octopus, uh, which is kind of the classic of the album. It was played by the band after this album came out. Um, and uh, the, the version on this is quite polite. Uh, versions later, there's a version on the H2HE remaster that's got a live version of Octopus, and it is far superior. It's absolutely zany. Um, really kind of displays the madness that the band was able to convey uh, very shortly after. But, um, yeah, like I was saying earlier, it's kind of half Fandergroff, half Hamill solo. The reason for that being uh, Peter Hamill had signed... There was some kind of contract confusion. and The band was established, the band broke up, I think their gear was stolen or something like that. And Hamill ended up signing a contract that the other guys didn't sign, so it was like a solo contract. He went in to record this as a Peter Hamill solo album. He got his old bandmates back in to record it, and by the time they finished recording, it was Vandergroff Generator, and uh, that that's that's how it is. So it went in as a Hamill solo, came out a Vandergroff. And there was some more, I think Tony Stratton Smith uh, did some negotiating to make that happen. Um, and kudos to him for doing that. Uh, I think there was, was there anything else I was going to say about this? Hmm. He's not, uh, I should mention, uh, Chris Judge Smith, Smith, who is not on the album, but, uh, it's kind of an interesting character. He's very integral to the Vandergroff story. Um, he was, him and Peter Hamill were together the founding members of the band, and, um, aside from two singles, Firebrand and People You Were Going To, uh, he doesn't appear on anything anything Vandergroff related other than that. Um, although Hamill would cover his, some of Smith's songs um, in later years, but uh, I guess he's worth noting, even though he doesn't appear on the album. Uh, anyway, stay tuned next time for the first real Vandergroff album, The Least We Can Do Is Wave To Each Other. See you then.